Welcome to Expedition Self on Ohm Times Radio with lifelong learner, entrepreneur, and creator of the worlds of Expedition Self, Sam Parado. Sam shares four decades of studying, guiding, and teaching how to go inside so we can build an incredibly powerful, dynamic, and validating relationship with the self. Expedition Self is laced with stellar, unexpected insights about what it means to be human. Listen now and ignite your self-development process with Sam Parado. Well, good afternoon. Okay, now I really am supposed to be saying good afternoon to you, so welcome to today's show. I'm Sam Parado, and we're going to talk about more. Hmm. Actually, the meaning of more, and more specifically how you define it and might think about it. You know, uh, when you think about those individual letters, M-O-R-E, and I didn't look them up in other languages, mucho, I I think, is uh, Spanish, but um, that they're packed full of individual interpretations and overloaded with expectations. (laughs) So it should be interesting to see where we go with this. I'm up here in Vermont this week, where each morning I get to come out and be greeted by this amazing scene of the sun glistening off the lake and the mountains off in the distance. Um, And, you know, it reminds me how much I spend time in my head thinking and planning rather than really, really appreciating uh, just the idea of being in nature. And of course, the more uh, focus I feel about trying and needing to move forward, that that survival mechanism, uh, which sometimes looks like ambition and sometimes it looks like drive and sometimes it just looks like a whole lot of bunched up of me, uh, when it pushes on me from way down deep, it's just, it's just so easy to lose sight of just being. So I'm taking a breath right now. I hope you will too with me as part of my desire and commitment to keep my feet on the ground and stay with myself. All right, so we can in and out, take some breaths together. Well, before we start talking about our more subject today, though, I I wanna tell you about a video I saw this week, which actually links up to my coming out uh, and looking at the sunrise in the morning. And it was a video of a woman who was showing a sunrise in her background and it was more like it had a, a breakers and there was big waterway. I'm not sure exactly where it was. And so she'd say, I'm showing you this morning on the water, which is what actually caught my my ear because she said it a couple times. And then she said, this, this is why you come here for this. She had a lot of pauses. This is what draws you you hear year after year. And then she she showed it again. <laughs> and as I looked at her face, I thought, I don't think she's filled with the joy that would match up with saying, this is why you come here. I, I started to look closer and saw conflict in her face or what I thought was like she was smiling, but yet not really smiling in her heart. So she, she goes on and she speaks about how the residents there welcome visitors. We welcome you. We care for you. We're so glad that you're here each each summer when you come to visit us. But this week, our visitors, you were very unkind and you were not caring to the people that work in our shops. And she said, then said, she said, still kind of smiling, this is unacceptable. We cannot have our children being treated this way. And then she said, in fact, one of them was my son. And what was said to him was so horrible. So I'm going to remind you again. And then she pans out to the waterway. And she's saying, this is why you come here. And this is a place where you can be kind and understanding. It's just not okay to be the way you were with us this week. And I I was touched by it because... She wasn't unkind in her speaking, but she was definitely pleading with people to think twice before they unleash their tongues. I think there's a lot of tongue (laughs) unleashing going on these days where we forget that someone, a person, a real one with a heart, a beating heart uh, is actually on the receiving end. 
And um, most of you don't know this, but I like to watch people's lips rather than their eyes. I watch their mouths move and how their lips tense, you know, when they're feeling emotion and where their vulnerability places itself on the lips. And watching her as she spoke, and then she was speaking about how these visitors and tourists were speaking. And I was just so caught up in all of the vulnerability that was present around her mouth. Because what I saw was a desire to actually scream, right? And be angry and let it rip while simultaneously holding it all back in this very controlled way, placing a, a smile uh, on it as if it was a ribbon and bow wrapped around a little bomb, you know, trying to hold the whole thing in place. I, I felt for her, I, I feel for all of us and I, I think we're in a big heap of trouble right now in terms of our humanity and getting things done every day and running our errands and utilizing services that we've relied upon forever. So I, I want to be somebody really stands for this here too. And, and with myself, right, is the world right now is not the same for you or for me. We're just not functioning the way we used to. Just look at all of the airplane uh delays and cancellations and luggage lost. And we, we can't assume that just because you could run in and get a coffee and leave your car running and be out in three minutes with no mistakes to your uh, caramel macchiato, that, that it can still be done. And, and just because it used to take you 10 minutes to drive your child to school doesn't mean that it still will. And well, I don't know, even though you always waited at the doctor's office for a little bit, right? they're always late. Now everyone is likely to be grumpy and snarly. And if you complain, they're likely to have very little empathy left for you. So I don't know, I could go on and on, but I think it's uh, super important to start adjusting our expectations. And it's always hard to be a have and then lose, right? Um, it's funny because that's even part of our show today a little bit because things are just not running smoothly anymore. And, and people who are involved in providing these services are just not able to keep the smile that that woman tried to keep in that one minute and 30 second video that I've watched. And you add this to the mudslinging and commentary being thrust in the political arena, engaging citizens in whatever emotional state they are in to do the same. And what we've got is a no holds barred, no care about others, self-important reaction waiting around every single corner and a reestablishment of rules for engagement that basically says, you don't matter, only I do. So I know it's kind of a heavy place to start, uh, but I think that that sunrise and then seeing her sunrise over water, it just brought me to this. So I'm directing this at all of us to lighten up our expectations, watch how we talk to people when we're disappointed. You know, it's happening in these little moments, not just the big ones. And it's going to require all of us to get more conscious about what we're having issues about so we don't then give ourselves permission to lay it on someone else. Because, you know, this is the key to self-responsibility. When I was in my uh, 30s, I just thought that the only thing I should ever talk about was self-responsibility. Of course, that's because that's what I was working on, right? Others just aren't responsible for our reactions or the feelings that get produced because of their actions. They don't cause them because our reactions are in our bodies, right? They're in our mechanism of being, and of course, it's hard because there's so much hate and anger and attacks on human rights and misinformation and ugly conversation. It makes me grouchy and defiant and defensive. I have a lot to say. But of course, the question is, what's really constructive? And what's the most constructive thing that we can do first? It's to rope in our expectations and our reactions. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so I think I've gotten that off my chest enough now um, to go into our subject for the day. This is a call-in show, and my number is 202-570-7057. I'd love to hear from you today. I'm glad you're here with me. And this is a good time to call in if you've had a moment like the ones I described before. And of course, of course, of course, anything that strikes you as we open up the more topic, you can call in for that too, for sure. Okay, more satisfying food. 
or healthy food, more love, more time, more joy, more color, more communication, more insight, more depth and substance, more travel, more connection with family, more art. I'm hoping your mind was filling in when I would do those pauses, the more. If not, try it now. More money, more exercise, more health, more more words, more education. What do you want more of in your life? And how do you define what that more is? We have to pause here. How can you say the word more without feeling instantaneously just a little bit overwhelmed? Because when we say more, it means that what is there right now? And then within the next breath, it will also mean that there's going to be effort and energy expended in some way to cause that more. Because let's face it, most of us don't say more and it just flows down to us. Now, I know there's a lot of spiritual conversation about that, but that's kind of not the direction I'm going in today. I'm going in the, the place of us knowing that the more gets created in some way by us, right? And that this energy expended in some way to cause that more, right? And then that there's this, there's going to be this need to make room for something that is coming in with the more, we're going to have to make time. We're going to have to make room in our hearts. We're going to have to make room in our our uh, logistical, you know, like our tangible spaces, our car or our house or, or our meadow. I, I don't think I've ever uttered the words of wanting more without knowing that I would have to make room for causing or having that more. And so in that moment, more seems to go from a sense of feeling or a sense or a feeling, right? Or a, a dream or imagining or a vision of having something to actually having to do something. <laughs> Kerplunk, right? Forget the vision of that, the joy in it. It's like, well, I'm going to talk about more. And in the next moment, it's going to be like, oh, I got to do something. It's, it's the in-breath. More exercise means more time. More money means redistributing how I make money and learning something or taking new information in that is gained by conversing with someone. More satisfying food means shopping differently or going to a different store that's out of the way or cleaning out my pantry so that I can make room, you know, for the new healthier stuff. I learn about food and how to prepare it. More color in my life. I want more color. It means getting a hold of paint and learning how to paint a ceiling. <laughs> when I, for the, my very first ceiling I ever painted, I thought you had to press hard on the roller. And, you know, it comes with this kind of like broom handle. And I'm pressing so hard, I literally broke, I broke the painting thing off of the end of it. And of course, I was pressing so hard that more paint got on my face and the the drop cloth and actually got on the on the the ceiling, right? So maybe it might mean something less <laughs> crazy, like pulling things out of magazines and and collaging your front door, like someone I know in my life, um, or just starting to notice the color that already is, exists around me is still part of an in breath. The minute you say more, it's going to translate to effort. And when it translates to effort, then you're going to have to begin to receive 
and notice and collect whatever you've decided the more is. Now, I want you to think about this. When you have said you want more of something, have you ever stopped to think about what your mind does first? Sometimes it's very intentional, right? You say, I'm going to do more. You sit down, you put it on your calendar, you check off when you're going to work on it, you make an appointment, you call somebody. Sometimes I think we say more, and the next thing we know, things are delivered to us. Like, right, I want uh, more fulfilling conversations with my children, and the next thing you know, what's delivered to you is a conversation that is not fulfilling. I think a lot of times when you put that out into the universe and into the world, again, you don't necessarily know what you're going to receive back, right? And so some people, I think they decide to ignore more sometimes, or they just close down the possibility of more and choose what they call content, right? It's, it's like, oh, forget more. I'm going to be okay with what I've got, whatever that is. I'm going to just do it, and I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to plan for it, and I'm not going to try to cause anything or create it. (laughs) So, all right. I'm thinking you may be wondering, okay, where am I going with this conversation today? Because I could go to the idea that more is a trap, and contentment is the answer to true happiness and peace. I could, but I'm not going there. Although I I don't know that I have real answers for you, um, because I I think as I thought about the subject, it kept turning in on itself. Uh, But I feel like there's some really good, good, gritty, meaty, rich material inside of um, playing this out and going through the conversation today. Okay, so when we come back, we'll go to the next step. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ometimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's not not excited excited for for summer summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's having a hard time time landing a job and getting back on his feet. I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I I am hunger in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm Sam Parado, and you are listening to Expedition Self. And I just want to clarify, if anybody was confused about me telling you about that woman uh, talking on that video, is you no, know, she wasn't talking about the waterway that I was on. And she didn't mention anybody's names or even what you know her store was or anything like that. It was more like an independent Instagram or Facebook video that I landed upon. So anyway, I'll hunt it up if anybody actually, you can write me if you want to look at, at it for yourself. So, okay, we're talking about more. And before we went to break, the point I made was that if we want more, then we're going to have to expend effort that we may not have or want to or know how to do, right? And then, I'm going to talk about it in me, I'm going to have to take something into myself that I may not have room for or or, or feel comfortable with. And that's that's going to bring up inner work or feelings that take me into my life. And then, and then I'm going to wonder 
why I can't just be content with what I have. And then I'm going to remember that anything is possible. So why wouldn't I want more? And that makes me feel light and free for a little while. And then I'm going to notice this hunger that is at work inside of me that drives me, that's fueled by moments in my life when I was deprived and I might've felt it in my bones, right? And I'm also fueled by my own creative impulse, my own divine uh, drive, right? So it turns out that this more conversation is about (laughs) a lot more than more, right? It's about deprivation and lack and complacency and acceptance and contentment and, and satisfaction too. They're big thoughts. So as I was poking around uh, for today, I found a poem. And so this poem is by Mark Toole and it's called Chasing Things. So I'm gonna read it for you, it's not very long. Each day I chase things. It's not my job per se, but I find myself doing it by instinct and out of necessity. If I'm not chasing, I feel guilty, like I'm injured and on the sideline while others are in the game. Even in my dreams I chase, but the things I pursue are unattainable, slip out of my grasp, seem to disappear just as I reach, never quite far enough. I'll be glad when the chase is over, perhaps when my beard turns gray or my desire wanes, hopefully by then I'll have learned to be satisfied. I think that's how a lot of us think about the the chasing for more. All right, so uh, while I was reading that, uh, Pauline, uh, I think you're on air. What would you like to add to our conversation? And hello again. Hi, hopefully it's not too noisy in my background of airplanes flying overhead. Um, I was, um, I I saw what your show was about. I just came on, so I barely heard most of what you talked about. But I'm hoping that I got the the gist of what you were trying to share. Um, I've I've been always asking for abundance, and then I realized I've got tons of abundance, but it's all chaotic stuff, clutter, things. I have so much stuff, and I actually think that the universe gave it to me because I kept asking, but at the same time, I didn't let go of things so that I can get more, I'd be more specific about what abundance that I'm looking for. I want to change that, you know, because the new moon's coming up. I want to say more of different types of things that I want in my life, not more of what I already have. So I think yeah. that we need to let go of the things that we don't need anymore so that we can make room for the abundance and be more specific about what we want. Yeah. I think that's definitely part of that possibility. It's kind of like when I talked about this in breath is that we, we know that the minute we start talking about more, we have to make room for it. Right. Right. Sorry about right. the noise in the background. Is- I'm in New York city. So it's always noise. It's <laughs> and I'm in a park. And I'm in a, a botanical garden and it's still noise but right over the airplane here. So that's yep. something well, I can thank do you about for- that. <laughs> Thank you Thank for calling you. and sharing your thoughts about it. They're, they definitely add to the conversation. Okay, I think Pauline hung up. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pauline. I appreciate that you took a moment to call us in the middle of a garden and an airplane going over the top. That's, that's not modern day life. I don't know what is. So, all right, um, let's get, find our way back here. So a conversation about more, it causes us to think about how we are engaging with life to actually have the lives we want, which does actually link up to what Pauline said, because she said, if I really, I don't want all that stuff now, I want specific things that make a difference, right? I want to get more uh, focused, right? Rather than just saying, bring it on, bring it all to me. But we, so we have to start somewhere. And I think uh, we should start in my very most favorite place, which is the conversation about the outside versus the inside. So outside mores, more money, more toys, more books, more degrees, more parties, more friends, more house, (laughs) Uh, more shoes. Uh, That would be a personal one on my side. You know, it's the stuff you can count that lives outside of your body. It's the things you acquire, more knickknacks, more uh, Pez 
it has containers, you know, those little candy things that you collect. I know somebody has a giant collection of those. How have you pursued more of these things? How have you done that? How, how do, how do the, these more things drive you or wanting more of them? How important have you found them to be? Were there some that turned out that made a huge difference when you had them? And when you got the thing you thought you needed, maybe it didn't, right? Or maybe it did. It's like, what did it do for you? A big part of my own um, kind of psyche is security. So when I had a place to live that I knew was mine, that I didn't have to move again, it definitely allowed me to settle down, right? To actually settle in and start to make room for other things in my life. I don't, I don't remember if I've told this story, but it is definitely one of my favorite ones, so I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm going to share it again. When I was in the seventh or eighth grade, there was this brand of pants called Dittos, and they had this very unique stitching that wrapped around your derriere, like in a, in a very inviting horseshoe shape. So it made it look, you know, like, I don't know how to say this, like a heart or whatever. And these pants were like $45 a pair, if I remember correctly. And of course, I at the time could not afford them. You know, acquisition at its finest, the brand name was the thing to have. And so my mom, she made a tag that said dittos in red thread, and she sewed it into the waistband of the skirt that she made me, which was a denim colored. And I now had a one of a kind exclusive ditto skirt and truly, truly, right? Like I, that was a more thing. It made me feel like I fit in and I had arrived People even ask me where I got it and how they could get it. <laughs> there are these, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful story, but it also talks about the complex nature of this more thing, because if we're not in a constant state of evolving, we can get locked into the idea that let me just keep feeding that aspect of the self with the same solution. You see, the challenge with pushing on this idea of wanting more from the outside is that it makes us feel something really important on the inside and we can get caught in the habit of it until we all of a sudden find ourselves empty. More money, it provides more freedom to choose where we live and how we live. And when we have more freedom, well then we feel less dominated by life right? Like we, we can choose and that helps us alter moments when authority might have ruled over us in a way that felt oppressive and possibly uncaring as we were growing up. External things. It can very much look like to acquire more externally. Then we're going to feel differently on the inside. So why not keep acquiring? <laughs> why not keep collecting? Why not keep driving for all that, right? Because it's, it's, it's going to make that feeling on the inside happen. Hmm. <laughs> you might recall me speaking about the five core needs of being human. The need to be a safe, the need to be acceptable, the need to be valued, the need to be worthy, and the need to be loved. And I am of the belief, every time I look in this layer again, that that to me, all roads are filling something in those areas. And that when the need is filled, that then all of a sudden we have freedom. I mean, in some ways, that's the definition of transformation, right? Is that when we finally actually come to a place where the need is fulfilled, we are freed up to not have to chase that or be focused on it. Goes back to that poem I was reading. More of anything on the outside is actually an, an attempt to fill more of those core needs. Uh-oh, but I thought more was a good thing. I thought it gave us drive. I thought it had us be creative. I thought it caused us to see where it turns in on itself. This is what happened as I started to think of it. It's like, well, wait a minute. If all that more is just about filling those cornies, then why would we want to keep doing that? Well, the issue of where you look and how much consciousness you bring to it, 
I think that's what makes the difference because the problem is that if you keep trying to acquire and collect and possess things outside of yourself, right? The outside versus, versus the inside, eventually it doesn't work. It doesn't fill it anymore. It doesn't make us feel more of those things. And, and actually what does happen I think when we acquire a lot externally, we, we can do two things. We can get very disconnected from our core self, or it's likely to actually bring up thoughts and feelings which call to us to actually go inside to look for more. And of course, the more we end up finding on the inside is more of who we are and how we came to be who we are, right? The more we end up finding on the inside, it means that it's the more of who we are. So I think there's this little trick that's always at play for us human beings in the world. Now, I think depending on where you grow up, I think about the culture that you grow up inside of, I think about the values in your family. To me, that's a very unique recipe uh, that is designed for you to get the maximum growth out of your life experience right, as it relates to more. <laughs> so really, when you think about that, and you think about the idea of whatever the more is outside of yourself, I even count education sometimes, the degree part of it, right, the actual accomplishment, not the learning so much, like the taking in new information, but the result of it. I even count that as a more. If you think about your family cultural values, think about what is your recipe that you've got wired up around more. So, all right, let's think of it, right? Now we're taking the more and, and we're looking at it on the outside and we recognize that we're actually looking for a feeling. Now, maybe we don't know it, right? A feeling of accomplishment, really, it's a little bit tricky because it's still tied to the collecting of the external, right? Feeling valuable or feeling worthy is something that's on the inside. So we can get into the trickery of it a little bit. So we're seeking something all of the time, whether we realize it or not. And acknowledging that we're seeking something is extraordinarily important if we're going to actually find it, <laughs> right? Because because what has happening is your brain can tell you that what you're seeking the more for is something on the outside but what's really happening if you're looking at it through a self-development lens is that it's actually a feeling you're looking for that happens on the inside. Because the truth is we humans will look in all of the wrong places to find that thing we're seeking more of if we don't have a better sense of what more really is. I, I find myself, you know, picturing that parent who's always working, not able to attend their children's activities or many of them, uh, you know, reading and napping through vacation rather than, than running on the beach or playing with their kids, you know, immersing themselves, missing off, out on immersing themselves right in that relationship, the fun that the rest are having. And this parent keeps saying, it's the only way to do it. I have to work this hard to keep having the things everything want, everyone wants. You know, your college, your clothes, your vacations like this one, food on the table. But this parent doesn't get in touch with the more that's being pursued from within and what it's actually filling on the inside. You see, we have this whole story about more that keeps it in place. And what keeps it in place is us not understanding what it's really filling. You can see it, right? Okay, I, I wanna make sure you get this idea. We tell ourselves that this more that we're going after externally is justified and the only way to do it, be, but we don't realize that the more we're actually seeking underneath it is actually what's running the show. And a lot of times we convince people that not only do we have no choice, but we convince them we're doing it for them. I don't know if any of you have those moments in your life. I, I certainly have done it myself, right? The more I pursue something that's part of the outside world, the more I run the risk of getting trapped in the cycle. And then the more I won't realize 
that it's not actually meeting my need on the inside. This person that I'm describing who's working all the time could be trying to get safe, right? Security. They could be trying to be acceptable or worthy. There are different reasons why everyone does these things. Because really, I'm going to reiterate this because I think we forget it. No two people are looking to fill the same more in their bucket or for the same reasons. So here's the thing. I think we pursue having more through others and out on the outside because we don't know how to be more for ourselves. I think we pursue, I'm saying a second time, I think we pursue having more through the outside world because we don't really know how to be more for ourselves. And that is as it should be. How would we grow or develop if we started out knowing it all? (laughs) If we started out knowing how to be more for ourselves? Really, what would the journey be if we had all the tools and we knew it all? And like, what fun is that? I know it's hard sometimes, but really when you think about it, it's a perfect equation. It's a perfect setup. And so this loop of trying to get things and then bringing it back inside only to to determine we have to get more, it isn't the same thing as being more for ourselves. And it actually can produce a bigger emptiness on the inside, hopefully thrusting us back into ourselves to go do some growth work. Okay, we're at break time. When we come back, we've got a caller, Diane, and we will see what she would like to offer to our more conversation. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Okay, we are back. I am Sam Parado. You're listening to Expedition Self, and we're lucky we've got Diane back. We haven't. Um, hello, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so I uh, was able to pull up some information on what you were going to speak about today, and I think it was on Messenger. And I actually had a response when you were asking similar questions to what you just did before you went on break. And one of the things, as I thought about it, that I, I am certainly guilty of wanting more. And so you, you made me stop and think, why is it that that's the way I feel. I never seem to have enough pair of jeans. I don't have enough earrings. It goes on and on. And I thought maybe there was a connection to the fact that when I was growing up, I didn't have but one or two of the things, like I only had two skirts and I only had two blouses. 
and I had to interchange them, and I wore them alternately at school so nobody would make a comment. I only had one pair of shoes that I put cardboard in it because the bottom of the shoes uh, deteriorated. And I think when I finally got a job and realized that that I had some money and I could buy what I was wishing for or that I would see, something clicked and all of a sudden, no matter what I bought, it wasn't enough. I always saw something else and it could even be the same thing. Um, And so I think I'm working on that, Um, especially now that it has come to the surface. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, um, gosh, there was so much that came as that I thought about as you said all that, you know, you're really describing what I just kind of walked through, which is this idea that we end up kind of going externally to fill whatever that deprivation is. And then as we're doing it, we realize it doesn't quite fill it, which then gives us this opportunity to stop and pause and say, wait a minute, what is it? Um, that's act that I'm actually going after and what is the, Mm -hmm. and that's where I talked about those five needs. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, because, right. It's like a, a placebo effect, right. Buying that pair of jeans, it replaces your connection or recognition to whatever the deeper need is. And so by you saying what you're saying that you're working on it now, it would, it would suggest to me that you've gone through that cycle enough to come up empty and actually realize that there's something else underneath there that you're really actually trying to, uh, which is owning more of the self, right? You get more of you. So you don't right. have to uh, use the genes to make you feel like there's more of you. That, that's right. It also has uh, brought to the surface uh, relatively quickly about, I really, I really don't need these to to make me feel better that day or to make me feel like I look good or that I feel good. I don't need, I don't need (laughs) more than I can actually wear. I I just don't. And so um, it was a freedom, huh? (laughs) Yes. Yes. So it was a a very, a very, um, what do I, I think it jumped up and, and, sucked me when I read it. And so I responded. And then as you talk about it today, it is even, um, what do I want to say, confirming that I feel like uh, I am on a new path, that I do not need everything that I see. I have plenty. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, sharing You're welcome. your story. I appreciate thank you. it. <laughs> Bye-bye. Right, bye. Oh, gosh. So I believe we all have these stories, Uh, whatever the tangible thing is uh, that we might utilize as part of that cycle that we're going on. And I'm hoping what's coming through is that I'm validating it's not a bad thing. It's more like it is the cycle of our own development. So um, so if you think, all right, uh, I get that I'm going to, I got all this stuff I'm trying to do outside. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to work on being grateful with what I have. Like I'll, I'll appreciate it more and I'll fall in love with the life I lead without wanting anything more. So, and I think um, this is important as like part three, <laughs> really. I don't think this goal gets to the entire opportunity around more. I, I think it's a step along the way, you know, this step of, Uh, taking on gratitude for what you have and appreciating it. It's kind of like a hack for the inside self. It has you stop and say enough and then be with the idea that things are enough, right? It interferes with the trying and the striving and the chasing such that you now have to take the case that whatever you do or have is enough which is kind of like what Diane, Diane was just talking about. So inevitably, what will be included in that picture of having enough will be some of the inside needs, like being loved and valued and safe and worthy. Like you begin to take the case that this is the idea of being enough and being filled up. And when this happens, there is a shift that goes on inside. 
So the idea that I move from the outside to the inside, I don't need that any longer to fill this for me. As I'm moving to the inside and I play with this idea of gratitude, right? How can I start taking the case of what is enough and experience that? Then something's happening. So I'm in agreement that this phase of working with more is needed and helpful and transformative, the gratitude piece. So um, I do want to just do a little outtake, right? Self-development of any kind is tied to where you are in your development. And so doing gratitude is not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing, even though I think it's a phase of working with this idea of more. Yeah, I got kind of annoyed over the past year, and everyone's like, oh, I'm doing a gratitude journal, you know, it's the in thing. And I know there are times in your development when gratitude is what's actually needed or what's missing. So in that context, when you're working with this idea of more, you're going to inevitably land on the idea of gratitude, but it shouldn't be, oh, I'm working on more, gratitude is the next step I'm going for, right? You just can't stop there. So we've said that striving to have more or attain more or collect more doesn't actually produce more. (laughs) And the reason for this is that the process when done like that is actually backwards. Things in the outer world are supposed to be the result or the dashboard or the outcome of what is set in motion from within. So when we do it in reverse, well, we're creating that placebo effect for the inside. So think of it this way. Take something you want on the outside, like more money, and then begin to work it towards the inside. What could you value within yourself that has something to do with more money? Self-expression, right? creativity, right? who we are, decision-making. These are things you could value. Knowledge, abundance, choice, freedom. Any of these could be tied to the outer experience of more money. But, right, any of the ones I listed will also bring you inside. And that's the trick. Because in each of the cases, it will bring you more into relationship with yourself. And the more you get in relationship with your whole self, the more you will have in life. Whatever that means, whatever you decide matters to you. And the more you can influence what gets created in your life. So now let's look at the ones I chose. Okay, self-expression. Actually, I'm going to look at one uh, one of the values. So you start to think about, well, how does self-expression go? Am I under or over self-expressed? What messages have I received about self-expression? And how does my current money-making or you know lifestyle support reflect the truth and authenticity of my self-expression? I'll hear people say, well, I can't get another job. They won't give me a promotion. I'd have to go back to school to be eligible for more money. Or I don't have any talents or special skills. So this is all I can do. When you really want more in your life, if you do, you go inside and you look for where less of you exists, where the less was left where something got canceled or made uh, off limits, where some idea says you can't, where you interact with yourself in lessening ways, where you actually block out parts of you, where you are unconscious of the things that get in your way. Now, I want to say that if you pursue more money, by finding a new job, you will be led back to this place on the inside at some point, right? Where you actually say, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm getting a new job. You don't go inside. You just do it, right? I often say to people who get angry and frustrated in their jobs, you're just going to run into the same stuff in the future because you're taking you with you. I really do believe we're here to transform and become whole. So this idea of more really helps us do that because it keeps us moving. The hardest part when I work with people 
um, you know, like make encounter, like what they're dealing with is when they don't want anything, right? Because there's no tension created between the inside and the outside, between the the having and the being deprived. I will say that usually when someone has nothing they want, though, I think it's often a defensive experience resulting from fatigue or disappointment or failure or even like habit, like being trained to not want it. So this pursuit of more on the outside redirected towards something on the inside it's going to set in motion a true adventure of learning about the self and it will use doing as a tool or vehicle for this discovery rather than doing being the ultimate point of it. Okay, so here's what that looks like. I might actually do four different jobs and see which one fits me. I might actually begin to take classes in mosaic making to see what's involved in that. <laughs> and if it brings me happiness and joy, I may, I may move out of my neighborhood and into a tiny home to free up more money so that I can travel more during the summer and see if there's some other place I'd like to live. I, I might wake up at 5 a.m. every day and do Tai Chi as part of creating like this more self-expression through my body. See, a lot of us do these things without connecting the dots that are actually within. Because if we do connect the dots, well, then each of the actions, this is kind of complex, is seen through the experimental nature, a learning perspective. And then we're not riding on the result or the outcome, trying to get more to fill something that's not ultimately going to get filled. So more, what is that? More is having more of you to handle life. More is having access to part of you that would normally be hidden. More is about getting so filled up with you and working through your fears and insecurities and inadequacies, the less than places, <laughs> that you actually can walk with a metaphoric full tummy right? A full tummy that says, I can handle this without blinking out my consciousness, having to numb out, right? Remember, we have a whole society where at some level we're numbing out all the time. You can have a full tummy that actually feels as if you are enough in who you are and what you bring to the world, and when I say that, I'm not saying you snap your fingers, stare in the mirror and say, I'm going to have a full tummy. I'm going to be enough. No, <laughs> we take the case that it's the process of finding it that produces enough. It's not the end game. It's not the achievement. Otherwise, we're actually back. We're back in that external focus. Right? This full tummy, it's a result of de-emphasizing the external more right? Seeing it kind of for what it is as you play it all out, and then redirecting it internally so that you can claim more of you. <sighs> the fears and insecurities and inadequacies, I just want to say one more thing about that because we're getting close to our end of time. You can tie these to any of the supposed bad qualities that make us human. And if you're going to have more going to have more, then it means you will claim and consume and see and relate to all the parts of you that don't fit good and don't fit or land on that ideal ways to be list, you know, that checkoff list. How can you have a relationship with yourself that doesn't include every aspect of being you as a human being? Okay. So you throw into my life the idea of wanting more money or wanting to be healthier, and I'm going to come upon the parts of myself that felt deprived and did things and thought things and felt things that was a way of not feeling deprived. So when we develop more by coming into relationship with ourselves, especially the parts that aren't our ideal, uh, I'm, uh, my tongue is getting tired talking, I can feel it. We're going to run across lots of hidden motives and actions that have probably influenced our lives in ways that we did not recognize at the time. When we go after more in the outside world, we can absolutely miss factors that are at play about our motives, 
our come froms and our real thoughts and the places that we're acting out of de- deprivation. And, it, and it's playing a role in how it goes, but we can't see it. So it leaves us mad or annoyed or frustrated. And we often don't have any understanding why it's gone that way. This is why more matters. To families, when we can't look at this cycle of more and how it causes us to avoid real conversation about our feelings and our dynamics. This idea of more is an awesome way to self-develop. I hope today as we've talked about it, it's gotten your head spinning and thinking about it and playing with how you can begin to understand the outside focus, but bring it in. Thank you and have an awesome week.